OSPF, or Open Shortest Path First, is a generic dynamic routing protocol supported by many platforms, vendors, hardware, and operating systems. Unlike other generic protocols which are distance vector, such as RIP, OSPF is a link state protocol that only supports IP routing. As a link state protocol, OSPF uses a link state database instead of a hop count. To do this, it creates three separate tables, one for neighbors, two for topology, and three as a routing table. OSPF has an administrative distance of 110, lower than RIP, which is 120, but not as efficient as IGRP, which is 100, or EIGRP, which is 90. Remember, the lower the administrative distance, the greater the efficiency of the protocol. Routes learned by protocols with lower administrative distances will override routes learned by protocols with higher administrative distances. OSPF uses the Dijkstra algorithm to construct the shortest path tree which then populates the routing table. OSPF's convergence time is not as fast as EIGRP's, but it is faster than routing protocols which are solely distance vector protocols. OSPF uses links, which are router interfaces assigned to a given network. The link will have a state, up or down, as well as an IP address assigned to it. OSPF assigns a router ID to each router. By default, this is the highest IP address of all the interfaces on the router. This ID is used by other routers to identify that router. Two or more routers that have interfaces in common on the same network are designated by OSPF as neighbors. These routers then form an adjacency, which is a relationship between two OSPF routers that permits the exchange of routing updates. After finding its neighbors, OSPF forms a neighborship database that lists all OSPF routers for which special hello packets have been sent. OSPF then uses LSA or link state advertisement packets that are only exchanged between OSPF routers that have adjacencies. OSPF then creates its topology database after gathering information from all LSA packets that have been received for a particular area. OSPF makes use of a designated router or DR to minimize the number of adjacencies required. This DR receives and transmits information from routers that are linked on the network to synchronize their topology tables. The DR is selected by the router with the highest specified priority. If the priorities are the same, OSPF selects the router with the highest ID. OSPF also designates a backup designated router or BDR. This router is a hot standby for the primary DR. OSPF uses a designated area similar to the way IGRP and EIGRP use the autonomous system. An OSPF area designates a group of contiguous networks and routers. OSPF area IDs can be different for each interface on a router, since a router can connect different networks with different area numbers. All routers in the same area will have the same area ID. For routers to establish adjacencies, they must be in the same area. OSPF uses the SPF algorithm, or Shortest Path First, aka Dijkstra, to calculate the shortest path to every network in the same area. That area is composed of routers sharing the same area ID. The SPF algorithm then constructs a separate tree for each area, so if a router is a member of more than one area, it will have multiple trees. OSPF also uses cost to calculate the best path and its metrics. Cost is different for different vendors. For Cisco, it is 10 to the power of 8th divided by bandwidth, and represented in millions. So a 10 megabit per second link will have a higher cost of 10, that is 100 million divided by 10 equals 10 million, and a 100 megabit per second link will have a lower cost of 1, that is 100 million divided by 100, or 1 million. When setting up OSPF on Cisco routers, you must also specify a process ID that identifies OSPF processes running on that particular router. This process ID has nothing to do with the area ID. OSPF routers must be in the same area to build adjacencies, but whether or not they use the same process ID makes no difference whatsoever. Here's an example of setting up OSPF on a Cisco router. First, go to Privilege Mode with the Enable command. Then go to Global Configuration Mode with the Config T command. Then go to Router Configuration Mode with the command Router OSPF and specify a process ID, it doesn't really matter what you choose. In Router Configuration Mode, you need to enter a network that you wish to advertise, which would be the IP address, the subnet mask, and then specify an area, in this case, Area 51, haha. <laughs> When using OSPF, one should configure a loopback interface. Loopbacks will never go down since they are virtual rather than actual. 
If you don't use the loopback, the RID, that is the router ID, will be set to the highest IP address of the router. The problem with this is that if the interface goes down, a re-election must take place to choose a DR and BDR based on the new highest IP. If this happens with a flapping link, the routers will never converge and this could bring the entire network down. Remember that a flapping link is an interface link that is constantly coming up and going down. Loopbacks never go down and so are safer to use for a router ID. Here's an example of setting a virtual loopback address. From within global configuration mode, specify an interface and select loopback 0. Specify the IP address just as you would for any other interface and then activate it with the no shutdown command. This interface is virtual, it's not real, but you can specify that as the highest IP on the router and it will use that as the ID. We've looked at RIP version 1, RIP version 2, IGRP, and EIGRP. Now let's take a look at OSPF, or Open Shortest Path First. Now, OSPF has a lower administrative distance than RIP uh, at 110, but it's still higher than IGRP or EIGRP. So on Cisco equipment, they're going to prefer their own proprietary protocols, IGRP and EIGRP, P, uh, as being more efficient over OSPF, but OSPF like RIP, you know, one of the good things about it is it's, um, you know, it's a sort of a generic, or it's a, it's an open protocol, so lots of people can do it. You know, you see it in Linux and Microsoft, and it's it's not proprietary to Cisco. Um, and unlike distance vector protocols or hybrid protocols, it is a solely link state protocol. And by saying that, we say it uses a link state database instead of hop count. So it creates three tables, one for neighbors, one for topology, and one for uh, its routing table. And this, you know, enables it to be a, a bit more efficient. Now let's set up an OSPF network. In this example, we're going to set up OSPF. And I'm going to log on to my first perimeter router here, the Galactica. And no dynamic routing protocols have been installed. Just the IP addressing has been set up on these three routers and five networks. So I'm going to go to privilege mode, and from privilege mode, I'm going to go to global configuration mode. I want to go to router configuration mode, so I'll use my router command, OSPF, I'm going to specify my dynamic routing protocol of choice, and I want to specify a process ID. It doesn't really matter, I'm going to pick one, start with one. And now I just need to tell OSPF what networks I want to advertise. And here's where OSPF is a little bit different from the other protocols we've talked about so far. Um, I'd go ahead and supply the network, 199.207.10.0, but instead of a, a normal subnet mask, this is inverted such that 0, 0, 0 is the part, the network part, right, that I don't want to change or that I want to match precisely or exactly, and 255 is the part that I don't really care about. It could be anything, any, any range of host and that last octet. And then I also need to specify an area. And the process IDs don't have to be the same, but the area does have to be the same if you want adjacencies and neighborship uh, to be built among your routers in the topology database. So I'm going to put this in area 0, and that's all I have to do. So remember that the, you know, for each one of these, the, the process ID doesn't really matter. It's just a process ID on the router that refers to OSPF processes. However, the area does matter. They all need to be in the same area. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, Control Z to drop back down to privilege mode. And copy run start. And I'm just going to go do the same thing on my other routers. So I'm going to go over here onto my middle router and log in. And go to privilege mode. And give my password of Kiwi. Uh, and let me go to global configuration mode. And let me go to router configuration mode. And let me specify OSPF as my dynamic routing protocol of choice and a process ID can be the same, could be something different, doesn't matter, I'm just going to use the same process ID or PID. So router OSPF1 and the networks I want to advertise here are going to be network 199-207-20 and again remember that you know it's inverted, the, the mask is inverted for this protocol so instead of 255-255-2550 it's 000-255. I need to put it in the same area as the first router so area 0. I'm going to do that for networks 30 and 40 as well. I'll just hit the up arrow. And 40, hit the up arrow. Okay, and we're done there. And I just want to save it. Copy run start. To copy my running configuration to my startup configuration. And I'm ready to exit out. Now let's go to our last perimeter router, the Valkyrie. Over here. Put in my password Kiwi. 
Um, let me go to privilege mode. Put in my password Kiwi. Let me go to global configuration mode and let me go into router configuration mode and select OSPF as the routing protocol I want to use. And again, I'll give it a PID, doesn't really matter, but we'll just say one. Now the area does matter. Network uh, 199-207-50-0 is what I want to advertise. Inverted subnet mask, so 000255 and area zero is what I'll put it in. And that's it. And I'll just do control Z to go back down to privilege mode and a copy run start. <clears throat> and everything's all saved. And we'll exit out. Let's test our OSPF network out. And now let's actually test um, our network out. OSPF has um, a lower convergence time than distance vector based protocols like RIP. Um, it's not the fastest thing out there. Obviously, EAI GRP would be would still be you know more efficient, but it is better than RIP. So let's see what we can reach now. And the first thing we'll do, let's see if we can get our gateway. So we'll ping 199.207.10.1. Looks good. Nothing should be wrong there anyway, unless there was you know a bad physical connection or bad IP addressing or something. Now let's see if we can get to the other side of the router. 21. Another network but a direct adjacency. Yep, no problem. So now, let's see if we can make it as far as 22, which is the interface on the other router. Okay, looks like OSPF has done its job. And now these two routers have you know, built adjacencies. They, they consider each other neighbors, and in the topology database, they've learned about each other. So let's see if we can get to 41 and 31, which again are you know, adjacencies on that second router via the next network. So we'll go, we'll try 31, looks good. And I'm gonna go ahead and try 3010, which is this host way down here. Okay, so I should be able to get there as long as the gateway of this, uh, gateway of Apollo has been configured correctly. Okay, and I'm getting my echo replies. And now I'm gonna try a 41. No problem. Now I'm gonna try the third router, the 42 interface on the third router, and I'll just pull this down and show you. See, here's 42 on the third router, the Valkyrie. Looks good. And now I'm gonna try the 51 interface on the third router, the Valkyrie, over here. <clears throat> Looks good. And if I can get that far, this is the gateway for all of these hosts on the fifth network over here. So I can try Daedalus or Zeus. Let's try Poseidon, he's 12. So, see if I can reach 50, 12. And it looks good. You know, the only thing that might have been wrong there, if his gateway had been configured wrong, I wouldn't get my echo replace. But we've tested everything, all five networks are good. OSPF has done its job, and convergence has taken place. Let's examine some OSPF traffic. Now let's take a look at some OSPF traffic. So I'm going to hop on the first perimeter router, the Galactica. I'm going to log in with my password of Kiwi, go to privilege mode, enter my password of Kiwi. And just to look at some of the commands, um, this is show IP OSPF neighbor. You know, once uh, you know they've finished talking and communicating, my neighbors will show up here. Um, we show IP OSPF. You can see the LSA packets and the SPF algorithm and everything that's going on here. In this case, on 192.0721, which I'm advertising that network or receiving that. Let's look at some other commands we can use. Um, show IP OSPF database. And you can see these are the networks I've learned about 50, 20, 40, um, and their respective routers, the router interface. Um, let me look at, let's do a show IP OSPF interface. <coughs> and again, this is just displaying some of the information here. This is some, um, you know, backup designated router, designated router. And we could change that. Remember, if we configured a loopback, we could, we could change that in the OSPF uh, structure. But, um, and finally, let's look at show IP route. I look at show IP route, notice all of the entries here that are prefixed with O are networks that have been learned about through OSPF. 
Okay, so um, through link state advertisements, LSA packets, and hello packets, building up our adjacencies and our neighbors. Let's take one more look at OSPF traffic with IP debugging. Let's look at some OSPF traffic too while we're at it. So let me log on to the first router here. And we're just going to go um, debug IP OSPF and events. And with OSPF events debugging on, let me drag this up here so you can kind of see. We'll just have to wait a minute until we get a link state advertisement. There we go, LSA packets. And this one, there's a hello. Hello from 192.0741, area zero. And there's our hello packets. Just, you know, again, kind of looking at some OSPF traffic um, taking place between our routers as they communicate with each other. And I'll turn that off with undebug all. Oops. Should do logging synchronous and turn that off, but anyway.